Our processional hymn is God of Our Fathers. Please stand. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee. We bless thee. We worship thee. We glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest on the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, 
Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, by your providence, our founders won their liberties of old. Grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to exercise these liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 66, beginning with verse 10. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. For you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply and delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the river of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip and bounced upon her knees. As one with his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger and fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment, and by his sword with all flesh. And those slain by the Lord shall be many. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 66, beginning with verse 1. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. I will begin. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Say to him, to God, how awesome are your deeds, so great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of man. who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. The epistle reading is from Galatians chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each one, for each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh 
will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. See what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they not, may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them, and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord After this, Jesus appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, Go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to your feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you bears me. And the one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
May the words of my mouth and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We reach the end of our series, our short series on Galatians in chapter 6. Near the end of today's passage in verse 15, the Apostle Paul sums up a central theme of the letter with a striking phrase. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. What does Paul mean by new creation? It's the overflow of what it means to be justified by faith, a central idea throughout this important letter that we're made right with God by our faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's more than just an intellectual assertion. Knowing Jesus means you are different. You are a new creation. And that's something that these false teachers that we've seen in this letter is something that these false teachers can never promise and they cannot deliver. They cannot make the Galatians new creations. Only God can through faith. This morning, we're going to look at freedom as a new creation. God promises new life for his people that is much, much better than the life found in the world of the Galatians or even the world today because it's the freedom from God to live as a new creation. Well, let's look at Galatians starting with verse 1 of chapter 6. Well, here's one aspect of freedom as a new creation. We are freed to serve. We are free to serve we have freedom as a new creation to serve one another in the church. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. This phrase, restoring with a spirit of gentleness, the idea is not to choose someone out, because of a transgression, do your best to restore the person to God and to fellowship with those in the church. And for those who are in the restoration game, people like pastors and leaders in the church, don't get too uppity. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Since we have freedom in Christ to serve one another in the church, we serve by bearing one another's burdens, verse 2, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens means imitating Jesus. Jesus ultimately was our, our sin bearer on the cross, and we too, like him, are to be bearers, but this time of this issues and the challenges going on in people's lives. We can't bear their sins. But we can help them in times of need. And what does Paul mean by fulfilling the law of Christ? Well, the law of Christ here means that we're required to live in accordance with Christ's ethical teachings. His law is summed up by loving your neighbor as yourself. When your brother or sister in Christ needs help, Help him, help her, bear his or her burdens. When you live like this, you are obeying the rest of God's moral law. And there are several other things that Paul says by way of admonition. Ways to treat each other in the church as followers of Christ. And then we go to verse 9. And let us not grow weary in doing good. Because doing good takes a lot of energy. For in due seasons we, we will reap if we do not give up. 
So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. We have freedom as a new creation to serve one another in the church, so don't give up. Don't grow weary. Ask the Lord for times of refreshment. From verses 10 to 18, we have this section where we look at having freedom as a new creation. Why would you even think of listening to false teachers and their false teaching when you have freedom as a new creation? Verse 12, it is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. What's Paul getting at? These false teachers that want an audience. They want a following. They want a congregation. They want to make a good showing in the flesh. They want to boast because now... After their awesome teaching, these Galatians are following them. These false teachers are not afraid to use guilt and fear to force you to be circumcised. Why do that? It arises out of their false teaching that these Galatians can only be justified before God by keeping the law. If these Galatian men don't receive the special sign of the Old Covenant then these Galatians cannot possibly be accepted by God. They can't be righteous without performing what's prescribed by the false teachers. Their teaching isn't for the Galatians' welfare. They're doing it for for their own self-interest, to build a following. It's been the same throughout church history. In the church, there's been a reoccurring theme of teaching that emphasizes what you need to do to be acceptable before God is to do all of these things, these works. These are what are necessary for you to be accepted by God. And what is de-emphasized is what Christ has done for you. And that's usually the litmus test. It's what, it's between what I do or it's what Christ has done that determines where the heart of the teaching is from. Is it from Scripture or is it from something that's man-made? Anytime the ground of salvation is based on what we do, it's a sign of false teaching. That's why we needed the Reformation. That's why Galatians was one of Martin Luther's favorites. The ground of salvation in Christ alone is by faith alone. And this is emphasized in Galatians. That's why Luther, following Paul, pushed hard against the false teachers. Because God knew it'd be a reoccurring theme in church history. But Paul also points out another motivation by avoiding preaching and teaching about the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will not be persecuted. The false teacher's message is not dissimilar to messages Paul used to teach before his conversion. It was a message current in the Greek and Roman world. Do good. Pay proper homage to the God. Worship the right way. Do the right things. Make the right offerings. And they will accept you. Maybe. Maybe they will. That's why you had to keep doubling down and offering more and more and more and doing all of these things because you never really knew where you stood with the Greek and Roman gods. They were whimsical. They may or may not accept you. They may or may not offer you the afterlife. How different is the message of the cross of Christ. You can see why it was so 
unique and appealing in the ancient world as it is today. The cross of Christ represents God's way of making us right before God, justifying us before God. It's God's way of providing rescue for sin. The cross of Christ is God's way of satisfying the wrath of God by having Jesus bear our sins. By faith in what Christ has done for us on the cross, our sin is exchanged for his righteousness. And our guilt and shame are taken away through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. The power of sin to condemn is broken. This is the gospel. And how different it is from the message of the false teachers and the messages in the Greek and Roman world and messages today that you can basically save yourself by following a teacher or a guru or a leader. Because of the gospel, though, and here are the consequences, Paul and the apostles, among others, were persecuted because they proclaimed Jesus and him crucified. The false teachers, they hated the gospel. And throughout church history, there have been those in the church that have hated the free gift of Jesus Christ and accepting him by faith. And you can see why from their standpoint that the gospel isn't too popular. How can they control you? How can they force you to do what they want you to do through fear, guilt, and manipulation if you don't follow their prescribed plan to get right with God? And Paul has another point as well, is that um, not only are they trying to avoid persecution by not preaching Jesus and the, and the cross, but that they are hypocrites. Verse 13, For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. It's do as I say, not as I do. They're really interested in the, in the numbers game, building a following. They want you to be one of their followers. And they want people to boss around. But compare their false motivation with Paul's in verse 14. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul's sole motivation is Jesus and what Jesus has done. What Jesus has achieved for Paul and for everyone by what he did on the cross. He has no other ambition. It has been crucified. Verse 15, for neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And putting it into our language today, what the false teachers are, are peddling, what they're selling, doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Their arguments are worthless. They are irrelevant. Their arguments that practices like circumcision can make you right with God don't count for anything Paul says. What does count is the new creation. And that's, that phrase is only found one other time in Paul's writings in 2 Corinthians 5. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We are a new creation if anyone is in Christ. Forgiven by God. Reconciled with God. Having peace with God through faith in him. And because of what Christ has achieved for us, we're free from the power of sin and we will live with God forever. Being a new creation means that God's life, mediated by the Holy Spirit in our life, will increase in this life because we're citizens of heaven. We leave the old life behind and enter the new life with God as a new creation. And it's a gift that God gives us by faith in Christ. 
Well, here's an analogy just in time for Independence Day. I'm a relatively new citizen of the United States. I was a Canadian citizen. And when you become an American, you have a new identity. The two don't mix. I'm asked if I'm a dual citizen, and the answer is no, I am not. When you become an American citizen, you make a solemn promise of allegiance to the United States. And just because, like I said earlier, it is Independence Day tomorrow, I thought, why not read out the oath of allegiance that new citizens take? And it's in pretty ornate language. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a citizen, subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion so help me God. That is the oath of allegiance. And it's very, very clear in the oath of allegiance, isn't it? That you're, once you're a citizen of this country, but now you are a citizen of the United States. You make a break with the past and pledge allegiance to America. It's the same when you become a follower of Jesus. As it is said in Romans chapter 10, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You have a new allegiance to Jesus. You are a new creation. And we make an oath of allegiance every Sunday when we say the Nicene Creed. We stand up because it's so important to say it. As new creations, we receive God's pardon and peace through the confession confession, absolution, because this is life in God's kingdom, a life of pardon and peace with God. We receive the body and blood of Christ by faith because we're members of God's family. We are a new creation. We've made a break with the kingdom of this world to enter the kingdom of God and different because of Jesus. Being a new creation doesn't mean that life is trouble-free. The Christian life is not for wimps. There are problems and pain. Sin and its effect in the world are still prevalent. But it does mean that love now is the controlling motive of life. Love for God and love for people. And there's also the promise of being a new creation. That one day at the end of history when Jesus returns in glory. We will see the fullness of the new creation. We have freedom as a new creation. So keep on receiving from Christ by word, by sacrament, by fellowship in God's family, doing good works of service, following Christ together in his church. Near the end of the passage in verse 15, the apostle Paul sums up one of the, the great benefits, one of the great blessings of being a follower of Christ, we are a new creation. And it's through that new creation, we have freedom from God. In this letter to the Galatians, Paul shows us the necessity of being rightly related to God, being justified by faith. It's not an intellectual assertion merely it's much more God makes us a new creation something that the false teachers can't promise and can't give 
we have the freedom as a new creation. We've taken an oath of allegiance to follow Jesus. Well, maybe this morning you hear that and about freedom as a new creation. You're thinking, well, I don't, I don't really feel that free. I'm evaluating my relationship with God on how things have been going and things haven't been going that well. I'm feeling trapped. I'm not feeling that close to God. I think he's still mad at me. Or he really doesn't care that much what I'm going through. Or maybe you're at the other end. Uh, you've been trusting um, it, your own awesomeness more than you've been trusting God. And, um, you know, uh, you're pretty impressed with uh, the things that you've accomplished. And, um, and surely God now has to reward me for all I've done for him. Well, theologians call this works righteousness. You think by what you're doing is making you right with God. But Jesus cuts through that kind of thinking uh, when he says in John 6, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. That's the only work that's required. So maybe it's time to take a humility pill and recognize that all good things come from God. And you would have no good thing if it were not for the love and mercy and grace of Jesus for you. And if, you, and if you're at the place where you're really looking this morning for freedom from fill in the blank, this is the day. This is the day to receive from the Lord an understanding that he is with you and he's not mad at you. He's not angry at you. And he's willing and more than able to restore you to fellowship with himself so that you may enjoy the freedom and peace and hope that only Christ can give. If you need hope, come to Jesus. If you need peace, come to the Lord. Receive from him his peace his pardon, and his freedom. Because for your freedom, Jesus died. And when we say the creed, say it as the Christian oath of allegiance and know that it is because of Christ that you are a new creation forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand that he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy, unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, we beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into, this, into the way of righteousness, and so direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servants, Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our Bishop, Pete, our Priest, and Bill, our Deacon, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. Amen. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, we give thanks for our missionaries, especially LifeQuest USA, bringing Christ's message of a future and a hope to young people in New Mexico prisons. Meredith Omland, a missionary in Mexico, Mexico with SAMS, the Society of Anglican Missionaries and Senders, and Young Life Albuquerque, a mission devoted to introducing adolescents to Jesus Christ and helping them grow in their faith. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve thee. Lord, in thy mercy, yeah. and we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Kelly, Malcolm, Paula, Bill, Dee, Lena, Mickey, and others we now name before thee. Lord, in thy mercy, we remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, that, they, that thy will for them may be fulfilled, and we beseech thee to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, 
and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling as able. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Now, please be seated. Good morning. Well, happy Independence Day. It's tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Uh, number of announcements on pages 17 and 18, including the fact that we're going to be having a new West Side potluck and discussion group starting on July 13th. And we have a location. So if you're interested, please get in touch with the office and we'll give you the address and details there. Uh, and just as a reminder, the, there's our next potluck uh, here at the church uh, this Wednesday. Uh, also, uh, discovery class, uh, will, the next one will be next uh, week at 9.30. Also, there's, uh, uh, on Thursday, there's a mission and outreach board meeting at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, in the fellowship room. So that's this Thursday. Walk in love. Love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and are bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who with your co eternal Son and Holy Spirit are one God. One Lord in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of your glory, O Father, we believe the same of your Son and of the Holy Spirit without any difference or inequality. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power. Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, O Heavenly Father, for that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee. And of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night in which he's betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of the dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, 
his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again in power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as the Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. the gifts of God for the people of God. Tate Domino
The post-communion prayer is found on page 15. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared to walk, walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Please stand.